We've learned a little bit about chemical activity, and in this lesson we're going to pursue it a little bit further because we're going to begin considering dilute solutions, and in particular dilute solutions of non-volatile substances. So in this case, uh, let me remind you some of the results that we've gotten before. We've been able to write down that the chemical potential of the solution could be written in this way as a sum of the chemical potential of the pure substance uh, plus RT times the log of its activity. Okay, now the activity we can generally uh, relate to this, and this is an exact result. This is exactly how we would define the activity. However, there is an ideal solution limit in which uh, this ratio basically goes to the mole fraction. As the mole fraction goes to 1, we saw that uh, true even in non-ideal solutions, that as the mole fraction went to 1, that this began to approach ideal behavior. And so we could then say that the activity goes to the mole fraction in that limit. All right, and this is something we can take advantage of even in these uh, non-ideal solutions that involve uh, non-volatile uh, non compounds. However, there is a little bit different um, consideration here. When we have a non-volatile compound as part of our mixture, well, uh, in that case, it's very difficult to uh, measure P2. So P2 is difficult to measure. So it means it's going to be very small and in general, what we're going to care about is the uh, limit as that component, and I'm, I'm inherently making that component too, but we're going to look at the limit as that uh, mole fraction goes to zero. So this means that we have to use a different standard. This standard up here, uh, the sort of more common case, is the Raoult's Law standard uh, for the uh, activity, the chemical activity of a, of a substance, whereas this one represents the Henry's Law activity, or uh, Henry's Law standard for that, and it means that we're going to have to define the activity a little bit different. So let me uh, clarify what I mean by all of this. When we have a dilute solution, now we have a real distinction between the two components that make up the mixture. The one that is in the vast majority, we're going to call the solvent. We haven't really specified that before. I'm generally going to call that component one, all right, just to keep things clear. So component one is always going to be treated using the Raoult's Law standard, the one that we've specified at the top of this page. So that means that uh, A1 is going to go to X1 as X1 goes to 1. All right, simple result. And we're uh, generally going to have it based on the vapor pressure of its, uh, of its pure substance. Okay, and that's the logical thing. As X1 is going to 1, we're going to a pure substance. So this represents, if you will, the standard state for that uh, particular component. For the solute, however, and this one I'll generally label component 2, we're going to use the Henry's Law standard. So what this means is that as uh, our um, as our uh, chemical activity is going to go as the mole fraction in that component, but as that mole fraction goes to zero. And now instead of using the vapor pressure of the pure substance as our standard, we're going to be using the Henry Law constant of that uh, as our standard. Okay, so there is a difference there. And basically what we're doing is we're, we're relating this to the slopes of that vapor pressure curve as it approaches those limits. And we saw that as it approached the limit of X goes to 1, it approached the, uh, basically the Raoult's Law uh, standard. Whereas when it approached X goes to 0, it did not approach the Raoult's Law standard, but it approached the Henry's Law uh, constant. And so the Henry's Law constant is, is the effective uh, pure substance vapor pressure, if you will, in this particular uh, consideration. So in other words, we're going to uh, essentially create two different treatments for solvent and solute. Okay, in the case of solvent, we're always going to have that the activity is going to be defined as the ratio of the vapor pressure to the vapor pressure of the pure substance. And then in the ideal limit, 
that will be represented by it going to a mole fraction of one and uh, and therefore the activity is going to the limit as the mole fraction. All right, for the solute on the other hand, we're going to be uh, essentially writing that the activity is going to be equal to its vapor pressure divided by its Henry law constant. Okay, and in the ideal limit, that will be defined by its mole fraction going to zero. So we're going to very small mole fractions. And um, in this case, the, um, the activity will go as the mole fraction, but more importantly, the pressure is going to go as the mole fraction times the Henry's Law constant. This is what we saw uh, for Henry's Law, uh, you know, that this was the limit in that thing. Whereas for the first component, it will go like this. All right, so there's a, a difference between the, the way we're going to treat these two things, uh, and it really has to do with the fact that this solute is very dilute, it's non-volatile, so it's going to have a very small vapor pressure, and, uh, and it's going to be more appropriate for us to compare it to this. Now I'm going to uh, add another little uh, factor on here, and uh, I hope this won't be uh, too confusing, but I'm going to put a, a little superscript on this Henry's Law constant the way we've defined it here, to basically say that we're using mole fraction as the way that we're measuring the uh, content of the solute in this case. All right, and, and the reason I'm putting a special sub, uh, superscript on this is that we also want to consider the case where perhaps we would rather use a concentration. And there are times when concentrations are more convenient. So let's uh, take a look at what that may mean. Now there are lots of different ways that we can specify the concentration of a solution. Uh, perhaps the most common way that you've seen would be molarity. However, another way uh, that is going to be useful for us is to uh, express it in terms of molality. M-O-L-A-L-I-T-Y. Okay, and molality is defined as moles of solute divided by kilograms of solvent. So it's a little bit interesting. It's not by volume, but by mass. All right. So in this case, uh, what we care about is having a thousand grams of solvent and what that represents in uh, in these various uh, kinds of mixtures. So I'll note that uh, for our solvent, which we're giving, uh, calling component one, we can also write that the number of moles of that is going to be a thousand grams divided by the molecular weight of that substance in grams per mole. This would be the way we could ultimately convert from molality into a mole fraction. All right, so let me specify that M1 is the molecular weight of component one. All right, so now if I were to write the mole fraction of component two, in this case, so the mole fraction of the dilute solute, um, I would write it in terms of numbers of moles as the number of moles of component two divided by the number of moles of component one plus the number of moles of component two. All right, but in this case, the number of moles of component one would be written as this ratio of a thousand uh, over the molecular weight of one plus the number of moles of component two. Now, if I'm doing this in terms of molality, all right, then I would automatically be assuming that I have a thousand mole, a thousand grams of uh, component one, and um, and I would be writing these numbers of moles of two would just be the molality of the substance, okay, because I'm dividing those by a kilogram of solvent. So another way that we see this written sometimes is that it's equal to the molality divided by this ratio plus the molality. All right, so this is going to be one of the ways in which we will convert from mole fractions to molality. Um, now I should specify too that a lot of times the solvent that we're talking about is water. So it's useful to know that for water, we have a thousand 
over the molecular weight, which is 18.012, would be equal to 55.508. That's moles per kilogram of water. So it's this number that we would actually be substituting in for this ratio here. I'll also uh, make the parenthetical note that a lot of times when we're talking about dilute solutions, we're talking about very small values for this molality, which means that it's much smaller than 55.5. So we can oftentimes ignore this piece of the denominator and just have it uh, equal to the mole fraction is just the molality divided by 55.5. Oh, eight. All right. This is this is something that we'll fall back upon just you know when we're looking for approximate uh, rough uh, rough uh, estimates of uh, of our mole fac mole fraction in terms of the molality. Now I'll I'll finish this this section here by simply saying that for our solution, the uh, chemical potential for the uh, solute component is going to be the chemical potential of the pure solute component plus RT log of its activity, which would be given ordinarily by P2 over P2 star. Okay, since we're using a Henry's Law uh, standard, what we can do is write this in terms of this as RT log, and then I'm going to make this a product of P2 over the Henry's Law constant and we'll again specify, uh, it, well I won't specify, but I'll just say that we would include the specification whether we're using a mole fraction or a, a molality standard. Um, and then multiply this by Henry's Law constant divided by the pressure of the um, pure substance. Okay, which means that we can basically write this as M2 star plus log of this component H2 over P2 star. Ooh, I forgot the RT. Plus RT log of this, which we're now identifying as A2. So what this means in effect is that this piece here is our reference standard under the Henry's Law uh, standard. Now I want to uh, summarize all of this for you so that you have it written down a little bit more clearly. I'm doing that on the next page. Okay, what I have here is basically a summary of how we will uh, treat these things in general. For the solvent, we'll be following the Rules Law standard, which means that um, our activity will be defined as the ratio of the vapor pressure to the pure substance vapor pressure, and in the ideal solution limit, that'll go as the mole fraction. And our activity coefficient, moreover, will be written simply as the activity divided by the mole fraction. Now you notice the activity coefficient is typically identified as a ratio of the real activity divided by the ideal activity. Okay, so in the ideal limit, it would go as the, as the mole fraction of substance one. In the real limit, it is this real ratio uh, of the vapor pressure divided by the vapor pressure for the pure substance. So what this means is that in the ideal limit, our, our uh, activity coefficient will always go as one, or basically be equal to one in the ideal limit. All right, for the solute, it will depend upon whether we're using a mole fraction or a molality uh, as our basis for measuring the amount of the of the solute that we have in there. In the mole fraction uh, way, we'll use the Henry's Law constant relative to mole fractions, which means that in the limit of the ideal solution, our chemical activity will go as the mole fraction as that mole fraction goes to zero. And likewise, we'll see that the vapor pressure will uh, be written as the mole fraction times the Henry's Law constant. We've already seen that as part of Henry's Law. The activity coefficient in this case will simply be the ratio of the activity to its mole fraction, just as it is in the case of the solvent. In the case of molality now, we're going to have a different Henry's Law constant. And I do want to specify that this is a different number than this because they are in different units, and you need to be uh, cognizant of that. Now, the way we would define the ideal solution limit would be as the 
uh, activity goes to the molality, not the mole fraction. So that would also be defined as, as the molality is going to zero. So as we're going to less and less of the solute in the solution, this will be the, the uh, limit of the, uh, this will be the pertinent limit for um, our activity. Uh, this also implies that the vapor pressure would go as the molality times the Henry's Law constant in molality units. Uh, similarly, we'll define now our activity coefficient as the ratio of the activity to the molality. All right, so if you can uh, keep this table handy um, and use it as a reference as we're going through the next few lessons, I think this will help uh, in helping clarify for you exactly what quantities we're talking about.